The fourth generation BMW M3 debuted in 2007. Behind me is the 2011 version. What makes it special is that it's the 25th anniversary. The first generation M3 came with a four-cylinder engine and a boy racer wing. So, is it still at the top of its game after all these years? Let's find out. Well, the boy racer wing is gone, and BMW's new modus operandi is to just fit in with the rest of the line. Of course, there's no mistaking that this one's an M3 when you look at the huge hood scoop and the M badge. It manages to look aggressive, but not over the top. Out back, you can see the big tires and the M badge, and you know that this one's a serious performer. This is a great reason to opt for the hard top. When you do, the roof is all carbon fiber. Very nice, the light underneath the door handle. It's little details like this that make the BMW M3 stand out. Thankfully, it's still a minimalistic interior, but in this one, you get a car radio, unlike the first generation. Basically, everything you see on the partial leather seats can be adjusted, and therefore, they're very comfortable. The pop-out cup holder is a nice touch. It stays out of the way when you don't need it. Just behind the steering wheel, you can find the paddle shifters. There's controls for Bluetooth and the radio, plus BMW's M setting. On the console, there's some storage, BMW's iDrive system, the shifter, and BMW's electronic damping control settings. There's dual zone climate control, a nice infotainment screen, and a start stop button as well. Out back, you get two seats, a pass through to the trunk, cup holders, and your own ventilation system. The trunk is large, just like you'd expect from a BMW sedan. The M3's 4 liter V8 produces 414 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque. With the optional 7 speed dual clutch transmission, that'll get you to 60 in just 3.9 seconds. 0.2 seconds slower if you opt for the manual transmission. The quarter mile passes by in an amazing 12.4 seconds on your way to a top speed of 155, and that's limited. If you took the limiter off, it would be good for 178 miles an hour. It pulls 0.98 Gs on the skid pad with a slalom speed of 71.4 miles an hour. Expect to average 16 miles per gallon overall with 14 in the city and 20 on the highway. So the M3 starts at $58,400. Add the technology package with navigation, that's another $2,500. Also add the competition package, another $2,500. Dual clutch transmissions, $2,900. And with the iPod adapter and heated seats, plus that fancy metallic paint in Le Mans Blue, that's $550. And the gas guzzler tax of $1,300 and you're out the door pretty darn close to $70,000. That puts you in the league of the AMG Mercedes and the Cadillac CTSV, all great cars. So you got a lot to choose from there, but you know, this BMW M3 is a great performer. If you just get in and start driving the M3, it's not in the sport mode. So just engage the M button on the steering wheel and adjust the damping control, and then you're ready. Once you're in that M mode, this thing really hauls crackers. What a great sound never need the radio in the M3. So the M3 is a bit of a sleeper car. It's sort of under the radar, it's understated. Unless you really know what you're looking at if you know cars, then it might just blend in with all the other BMWs to you. But it is a status symbol. A lot of people buy BMWs for that reason. And uh, I must say that if you are buying an M3 or you own an M3 and you haven't taken it to the track, you should be ashamed of yourself. Take it to the track. So the first generation BMW was built for a purpose. It was Group A racing, basically sedan racing on a road course. And they needed to build 5,000 so that they could race the car. 
Well, they did build 5,000, but they actually ended up selling a lot more, three times that amount, actually. So the M3 really caught on. And today, they don't need to build it for that purpose. They sell plenty, but you can still see them racing on many circuits throughout the world at many different events, the M3. And it's one of those race on Sunday, sell on Monday sort of things. And it works, especially for BMW. All right, now we can see what the M3 is made of. Great twisty road. Listen to that engine. That's what the M3 is all about right there. When it comes to handling, BMW's M division, the motorsports division, really knows how to tune a car. And they've got the Autobahn to test it on. Now you can use the paddle shifters and shift for yourself, but in a car like this with the double clutch transmission, it does everything better than any human can do it. So I actually just like to let it do what it does in any given situation. Now don't get me wrong, I like to shift for myself, but again, the dual clutch transmissions these days are so good that just let them do what they do. They do it better. Interesting to note that actually driving the M3 with the dual clutch transmission kind of does exactly what you do if you were shifting. It hangs in the gear when you're slowing down so it actually feels like a manual transmission car. So lately I've driven cars like the Mitsubishi Rally Art with the dual clutch transmission and that actually is a very nice transmission and the Nissan GTR and they all really have different personalities even though they're all double clutch transmissions. Check out my full reviews on those if you want to see what I thought of those cars. For me, the ultimate sports sedan is probably the BMW 2002 or shape-wise the 3.0 CS. That was a great looking coupe. Now take the current M3 and to me it's just gotten a little bit big. I think uh, the 1 Series M is probably my current favorite. I like a sports sedan to be tossable and because it's smaller to me that's just a more tossable, more fun car to drive. Nice country road, peering out over the aggressive nose of the M3. Even at highway speeds, it's very civilized. You know, you don't have to drive it like a sports car all the time. It's a very comfortable car to take on a trip. It's got a double clutch transmission, but hey, you can use it like a normal automatic, no problem. So I can't find any faults with the performance of the BMW M3. But in terms of the overall usability and ergonomics, well, I do have a couple uh, bones to pick there. If you drive any late model sedan, perhaps Japanese or American, you'll find that the controls are all, they all basically fall to hand very easily and, and make sense and are labeled well. Well, German cars, uh, and I have a Porsche 911, German cars, you know, they have symbols and that sort of thing, so it's uh, a bit less intuitive to use overall. Also. I'd like to see a backup camera, I'd like to see XM radio uh, also, at least available. Moving on to the shifter, uh, also have a Prius and uh, the shifter is very much like a Prius. Uh, in a word, it's kind of quirky and uh, I think they could do a little better there as well. So the M3 might have changed quite a bit over the years, but it still remains a great handling coupe, convertible, or sedan. And it still blends in well with the rest of the BMW line. So have they stayed true to their roots, and are they still at the top of their game? Yes, they are. I'm driving Ivan Katz.